Hey everybody, Karen here. Welcome back to Unpinned Creative and day eight of Defer Marimba. I am really excited about this one. <laughs> um, so the prompts are beads and postage stamp dangle. And the animal is butterfly. Let's get started. I love me a good dangle. So, hence my excitement. Um, it's hopefully going to be quick and easy. And coincidentally, I have just been um, in one of my groups making tassel angels. Um, we just did that on the weekend, last weekend. So, um, I am going to use that idea and make a dangle for my journal. So, that's one that we made. And this is another one I love this one because those are my colors obviously black you've probably seen I wear a lot of black <laughs> okay let's get started so first of all I am taking a small wooden bead and some jute string so this is just jute that I a thread that I pulled out of a jute coffee bag coffee bean bag and then I'm folding that in half and pushing that through the center of the bead. If, as sometimes happens, it doesn't go all the way through, you can get a pokey tool. So if it's hard to push through, um, you can either thread it onto a needle, obviously, or um, use a pokey tool, like my awl. And I just want to pull a loop through like that and leave the tails hanging. Okay, the next thing I've done is gathered a bunch of thread, different uh, fibres. So I've got in here some acrylic wool. I have got very thin strips of fabric. Um, I've got more of the jute coffee bag. Um, I've got some lace even. So, yep, just a bunch of um, different textiles. So then we just grab them. Oh, so I lay them all out in a, in a bunch and then grab the center. Fold it in half and push one end of that through the loop I've made. So holding on to the center of that bunch of threads, I just grab one end and pull it through the loop I've made. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so then I can make sure I'm kind of in the center and pull that tight. All right, then I'm going to move my postage stamps. They will come in later. Then I'm going to um, slide another bead, a smaller bead, onto those two, the tails of the string that I pushed through the first bead. And slide that up. And I'm going to carefully pull all of these threads down over that top bead, hiding it. So just checking all around that the bead is covered as best as possible. So you want a decent bunch. You usually need more textiles um, than you think. <laughs> well, I do anyway. Um, to get a good covering of the bead and also a nice bunch for your dangle. So you can see that that bead is now all covered. And then what I'm going to do, so this bead just needs to hang out there for a minute. Then I'm going to grab some more twine, string, you can use whatever and wrap it around 
the textiles under that wooden bead that we've just covered and tie a knot it does get a bit fiddly and tricky sometimes so I'm just going to tie a knot there and then I like to wrap it around a few times just for a bit of extra oomph Now, find your other bead that you've put on and the tails. And we're going to push that up under that top bead. Pull it all tight. And then we're just going to do the same thing. Wrap that bead with the textiles. And then I'm just going to do the same again and tie it off. Wrap that round a few times. Securely. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now, That's basically our tassel done. Now we get to do the fun part of decorating it. So the middle, um, the legs of the twine that you slid the beads onto, you can trim that off if you want to, or I'm going to leave it on because, um, you know, it, I have twine in here anyway, so it's all just going to add to the to the tassel. So now we get to go ahead and decorate, and I've got a few different beads here. For decorating, um, I've got some wooden, bluey, greeny coloured beads. I've got some glass purple beads. I've got a couple of clear um, glass beads with flowers on them. These are all beads that I've had in my stash for a long time and I'm excited to use them. And then I have this really beautiful, I hope you can see it, it's a ceramic bead um, in the form of a babushka and it's hand painted. I don't know if you can see it, the camera is blurry. But anyway, it's really cool and I'm really excited to add it to my <laughs> journal. So I'm just going to take various um, strands of the textiles and add those beads on. One thing I did include in here is some um, cotton, strands of cotton thread. It's like crochet thread or lace making thread. And so that's really good for beads that don't have um, very big holes. So the smaller beads will go onto this. So I'm just going to slide them on the thread and take a smaller bead. So I have these little silver ones. Slide one of those on as well. And then I'm going to take the end and slide it back through the larger bead. Like that. And then I just tie it off. I am not a bead beader or a jewelry maker or anything like that. I just love beads and dangles and things so this is how I do it. I'm sure there's a proper way of doing it and a proper way of tying it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I just do what is easy and works for me. So I tie about three knots. And then trim the tail, and there we have a dangle, a dangly bead in there. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and add all those other beads and I'll be back and show you the end result. Quick tip, if you're having trouble getting thread through a small hole, and I do this all the time, and it works a treat, is get some, get some glue on the end of your finger. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And then you can um, take the end of your thread, whatever you're trying to get through a hole, and put the glue on it and twist, and it gives you a nice, firm, pokey bit to get through the whatever you're trying to thread. See? Easy peasy. Okay. Okay, so I have my beads on. I could go ahead and add a whole lot more beads, um, but I and I could be here all day. But um, I'm happy with the amount I've got because I actually really love when the more you look at something, the more you see, and so um, that's kind of the idea. When you look through something and you feel it, and my journals are very tactile, you can tell that there are beautiful things there um, that are not necessarily immediately evident. And that's kind of how I craft. I take things that are not necessarily um, immediately useful or beautiful and turn them into things that are useful and beautiful. So <laughs> um, there's that beautiful ceramic bead. So I'm going to leave the beads there for now because I have one more thing that I'm very excited to do to add to this. Well, actually, more than one thing, but a couple more things I'm really excited to do to add to this tassel. So the first thing is one more dangle that I want to add. And this is where the postage stamps come in. So I've found five little stamps that are all the same size they're all from India and they're all the same size and I am going to turn those into a miniature book so I am as I said very excited about that so I'm just going to take a piece of card and I am going to <laughs> okay so I'm going to cut a piece of card that is slightly wider in height than the stamps. And then I'm going to fold it and I want it to be slightly wider as well. So I'm going to fold it there and then I also want a tiny tiny spine so I'm going to make another fold fairly close to that first fold which will give me a tiny tiny spine. See? Okay, now I think it's too... Yeah, now I need to trim it to the width. So you can see that this cover of my book is slightly wider and slightly higher. I think it's a little bit too tall actually, so I'm going to trim it a bit. Like that. going to make those creases a bit more okay. 
and I'm going to trim the corners just because. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ink that up. And I'm also going to ink up the um, inside edges because I don't want the white showing of the inside cover. Okay, next thing is I need to add a little um, jump ring to this so that I can attach it to my tassel. So I'm going to grab a jump ring. Okay, I found a jump ring. Oh, the focus is not good, is it? And I'm going to use a pokey tool to poke a little hole in the top of the spine, not too close to the edge because I don't want it to tear. In fact, I think I'm going to reinforce that so that it doesn't tear with just with another piece of um, just with a piece of scrap paper, actually. We'll be fine. I'll just glue that on. This is a scrap from yesterday's Do you feel remember? Right, so poke with my pokey tool. That glue is not dry, so really don't want the hole too close to the edge so just be careful so I just moved that scrap up because it was too close to the edge of the scrap and the scrap is the reinforcement so <laughs> okay so there's a tiny little hole and then I'm just going to open up my jump ring and pop it through Carefully and close it up. Okay, so that gives me something to attach my book to the um, tassel. Right now for the stamps. So I'm going to fold each of these stamps in half, exactly in half. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's let's go back a few steps. Obviously, my book does not need to be that wide because the pages are going to be folded in half. So it only needs to be this wide, which makes much more sense. So I'm going to trim that off like that. Clip my corners. And ink again. No big deal. This is this is what crafting is all about. <laughs> Learning as you go. Okay. I think I know what I'm doing now. Back to folding my stamps in half. Now I have two dark blue ones and the rest are all different colours so I'm going to make the two dark blue ones my front and back stamps and then I am going to take the right side of this first stamp so the opening is facing to the left and I'm going to pop some glue on it and I need a glue book so I don't make a big mess. And then I'm going to take one of my other stamps, make sure it's up the right way, the same as the same way as this one that I'm gluing to, 
and I'm going to attach the left side of that stamp to this first stamp that I've just glued. Okay, so getting them as lined up as possible, like so. Okay, and I'm going to fold that back together and glue the other side of that stamp. Take the next stamp and attach it. Make sure it's up the right way. Oh, this one's the landscape one, so it doesn't matter, but make sure it's up the right way and attach one half of it to the half, the glued half of that other stamp. I hope this is making sense. So you can see what we're getting is a wee booklet. Okay. More glue on the other half of the stamp. Attach your neck. Make sure you make sure it's up the right way. I'm gonna keep saying that because if anyone's gonna glue it up the wrong way, it'll be me. <laughs> and attach it. Not that it really is going to matter too much on such a miniature book, but, you know, I do try to do things properly. Right, fold that in half, and we're up to the last one. Oh, make sure you're up the right way still. Glue the last half. Take your final stamp, and... Make sure it's up the right way. Pop it onto the little booklet we're making. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. So I'm going to make sure everything is lined up as best as possible. Take my cover. I'm going to pop some glue all over my cover. And then I'm going to take my booklet, make sure it's up the right way, <laughs> fold it in half. Okay, push my spine into the spine of the cover. Centering it top and bottom and then close my book. And what you've got then, apart from being all sticky with glue, is a tiny little book. The cover's a bit big, but I'm happy with that. I could make it smaller if I wanted to, but do I really want to? Nah. Okay, I'm going to clean up the glue, messy glue residue. Because I did put glue all over that. Tiny little book. I am going to trim the cover. It's annoying me. I'm seeing as I wiped off all the ink anyway with the <laughs> wet wipe when I was getting the glue off. Doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, I'll re ink. Okay, there's our tiny little book. I love it. I love it. Okay, and now I want to put something on the cover, of course. Okay. 
get all the mess out of the way for the cover I would like a see if I can find a tiny little flower there's a pink one not really what I was looking for like this it's just a tiny little paper flower and then and then I'm going to see if I've got a tiny little butterfly I don't think I'll have one that's that tiny Okay, I'm going to ink up the edges of those as best I can. That's pretty tiny. And I'm going to ink the back of that one too because it's white. So, ink to the back and the edges as best I can and then this um, wee paper flower is very yellow so I'm going to put some ink on that as well just to grunge it up a wee bit and make it not quite so yellow okay so that's gonna go on there got this little pink flower as well I'll just pop that behind and then the butterfly is going to sit on top. So, some glue. I'm just going to take a tiny strip of paper to get a wee bit of glue. Get some glue on the end of my glue. Get a tiny strip of paper. With some glue on it. Pop that on oh, the back of the flower. Press that onto the book. Get my other flower that tried to escape. Pop some glue on that. So if you have a tiny, you know, the um, glitter glue with the tiny little nozzle, that's awesome. I don't have that. So <laughs> this is what I do when I need um, to be more precise with my glue, gluing. Not that I'm ever very precise, but you know. And then my butterfly, I want to bend his wings up. And I'm just going to glue the, I mean, this is not very sturdy and it's probably not going to last very long on the tassel, but it'll just get more grungy, won't it? Actually, I might glue a bit more than just the body down. And just fold the edges of his wings up. Okay, then he's going on there, like so. And that's just going to be the cover for the book. I mean, I could keep going. <laughs> I could keep going and go all out and. Um, decorate some more but I'll be here all day and I'm trying to keep my videos succinct succinct and you all know you can add decorations and blah 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 don't you okay now I'm going to attach this to my tassel dolly got a piece of cotton thread here I'm going to slide that through the book and I want the book right at the top by the waist. So I'm just going to tie a knot there. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. One more thing I wanted to add. So I want to give her wings. Of course. <laughs> so I found some images in my... Not a beetle in one of my nature books that I love and yes I realize they're moths and not butterflies but I think 
it will be really cool. I think that one works really well, actually. Although I'd love this one, but I think it's too big. That would be just completely OTT. Which I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not that worried about, but it won't be very practical on the spine of a book. So I'm going to say no to that one. Oh, there's this one as well. Oh, that might be more practical. And it has the red, which is lovely. I'm going to do that one. So I'm going to fussy cut this out. And, um, and I'll be back. Just before I go ahead and continue with the fussy cutting of this, I want to I want to back it because you'll be able to see the back of it. So I'm going to do that before I fussy cut it. So I only have to fussy cut once because hopefully you all know how much I love fussy cutting. <laughs> so I'm just going to use tissue actually because I don't mind if I can see the text through it. And I'm going to use glue stick because it sticks okay. And... I haven't got my Mod Podge here or my clear gesso. And now I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut that out. Like so. I am going to ink all the edges, obviously. So I, when I make journals, um, I don't necessarily make them for sturdiness and there's a reason for that. The reason is that I like journals to grow and evolve with the, um, with the owner and whoever's using it. So things like this, which is really not, it's just paper, so it's really not very practical for the spine, but, um, and it will probably get torn and ripped off and stuff like that. But that's okay because it gives opportunity for more stuff to be added. It ages things and um, gives opportunity for over the years for the book to evolve and become something, you know, different and kind of grow. And anyway, I really love that um, that concept for my journals especially I do try to be um I do make sure that any journals that I sell are robust and um but that is the concept they they will grow and evolve and change over time so I love that I'm going to glue those wings on with my glue which is very messy now messy glue and unfussy cutting <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love this so much. <laughs> I'm so glad it's going on my journal. <laughs> I was going to be making these to put in my shop. So um, um, the angel tassel dolls, uh, I think I'll have to make some like this and pop them in the shop. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. So she's done. I'm I'm happy with her. As I said, I can keep adding. And through the years, I probably will add beads and stuff like that as I find them to um to her. So let's pop her in the journal. Now, I'm not going to add her to the spine as such. I'll show you what I'm going. But she will be on the outside. I'll show you what I'm going to do. So, let's pop her over here. Find the page. So she, so this was yesterday's page, and this is the page for today. So for this page, where's my butterflies? My butterflies are going to go on there. And she is going to go up here. Because this journal has an open spine and I've just used book rings, um, I am going to attach her up here and she will hang over and you'll be able to see her. That's the idea anyway. <laughs> Let's see how we go. So I'm going to make a tab up here. And... I haven't thought about what I'm going to do that with, except that... So I might just use a piece of this card, which is the same card that I used for the um, 
little book cover. I'll just fold that in half. Do my best to get it about the same. Woohoo! Trim it off and cut up. Put some glue on it. My glue is very messy because I keep leaving it open. Pop it over the top of this page. Like so. And then it needs a butterfly, of course. So I have this butterfly, which I really love. And that just came out of a book. I'm going to use this one. Um, and I am going to put something behind it. I'm just going to glue that on there. I'm just going to glue it at the top. And then I'm going to... Going to <clears throat> Like that, and then I'm just going to leave this hanging down because when I come to decorate this page in the new year, um, then I'll do something with it. I'll decide if I want it long or leave it on there or what I want to do. If I'm fussy cutting butterflies, I cut the antennas off because. <laughs> I don't have time for that. But then I usually add on new antennas that are more 3D somehow. Now, that's going on there like that. I quite like that. And then I'm going to pop an eyelet through. Probably should have done that before I, you know, made it more difficult for myself. Right, I'm going to pop an eyelet through the top of that tag. And I can never get my crocodile, figure out my crocodile eyelet thingy. You'd think I would have by now because I've put in 50 million eyelets making corsets and things like that. But so um, I bash it with a hammer. <laughs> and it looks cool I like it I like imperfect that's the thing with me most stuff is imperfect okay and then now all we have left to do is attach our tassel dolly and I am going to do that with a safety pin because I use safety pins all the time and um, this journal is all about me so yeah so I wanted to include one in my journal. I'm not going to attach it directly to the dolly though I'm going to use a split ring. My split ring slide it under the twine so this is the center this is the twine that we pushed through the center of the bead at the very beginning and then pulled tight to hold all those textiles in place. So I um, just have just slid it under that and then onto the end of the safety pin and I will close that up. And that is going to attach to my eyelet. And there she is. I love her so much. Okay, let's put her in the journal. So, there she is. She's not going to sit like that. She's going to sit at the top of the journal. So, 
so when the journal is closed she hangs out over the top oh it's a bit hard to see because my camera is too close but um you get the idea she's hanging out over the top there and i love it i love her i think it's amazing <laughs> I can't believe I get to do stuff like this. So that's cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end the video here um, like I usually do because I feel like I've waffled on for too long. I am going to fin um, use the butterfly image from Louisa and Barbara and I'm going to make a pocket on this page with it. Um, very much like I did on the B page. I'll just make a pocket to put something into, seeing as the tassel dolly is the main point of this page. So let's bring her in. Oh, I just love her so much. So I'm just going to make a pocket there. I will go ahead and do that and then come back and show you the end result. Okay, so here we go. We have made a tassel dolly with beautiful uh, moth wings actually. <laughs> a miniature postage stamp booklet. And then popped a tab on here with an eyelet. And then I have just put a strip of fabric down here on the edge of this book page, which is now a flip, and glued the um, beautiful butterfly illustration from Louise and Barbara, Louisa and Barbara on top, um, and coloured the butterflies with the inks like I've been doing with all of my illustrations. And now I just need to write the date, which is the 8th of the... 12th and the prompts for, for today were beads and postage stamp dangle And that's it. I really hope you've enjoyed um, this one. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.